They will post uh, all types of breakdowns, commercials, short films, indie films, sometimes TV shows too. Uh, Casting Networks is another one that's more for commercials. Casting Frontier is another one. But also never forget the power of the community and word of mouth, right? If you know somebody who's a filmmaker or a fellow actor or a fellow writer, you know, keep in touch with them. Like, see if they have a screening for their documentary, show up to their, their event because it helps them remember who you are and they'll get a feel of your energy. So then maybe next time if they were to have a film that they're writing, they will consider you for a part. I've had moments when I went into an audition and there was not a role that was for me, but then because the director liked me so much, they wrote in a role for me. So sometimes that can happen. Uh, so be on the lookout for all different types of opportunities. Instagram, you can also sometimes find opportunities there. I don't think it's always available, but <laughs> it's a great way for you to like connect with people, I would say. So those are some things, yeah. And, well, how do you avoid being typecast as an AAPI stereotype? <laughs> you got to stand your ground. You have to stand your ground. Uh, I will share a little story. So um, I almost quit acting last year. I was about to quit acting last year because the year before that, I was in an agency, this small boutique agency, and they, they gave me this uh, audition, and it was for this role that I found was very offensive and it was very racist. I had to put on an accent, this guy gets dehumanized, he gets tortured, he gets stripped butt naked. And I didn't think, I was like, you don't need to show all of this for a big national television show. Um, the agent said, why not? This is a guest star role, it's a big opportunity. The money is there, you're gonna get built more credits. And so I ended up going on a 45 minute phone call with them, explaining why I feel like this is an offensive role and why I don't even wanna bother auditioning for it. Long story short, after the conversation, I got dropped from that agency. And so that is part of that thing that you're gonna experience sometimes, but I, will, I don't regret that because I'd rather be working with somebody that actually understands me. You don't want to get to the point where they're handing you these stereotypical roles and you just say yes to it for that paycheck or for the, the credits. I mean, sometimes if you feel it, and you're, you know what, I don't mind taking on this role, or if you feel that this role really speaks to you, sure, that if you fit the role of like an older Asian father and maybe he has an accent, but he's a funny dude, then look great. Audition for it. You would probably kill this role. And, all power to you, especially if it's with the Asian cats, right? But a lot of times you might get those roles where you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to do it. Your heart is not telling you to do it. You always can feel it in your gut when something's not right. And so you have to stick around and you have to make sure that your moral compass never gets swayed. Because the industry can very easily turn you into a monster where they're like, okay, like, do it, don't worry, I promise you, you're gonna get really big. Don't listen to what they say. Listen to your heart and listen to the loved ones around you. Exactly. Yeah. No matter what. And, and, and write your own stuff. If you don't see what's out there that's fit for you, write it. Or get friends to write it for you. Work together on all this. Cause, right? A lot, a lot of people do that nowadays. That's what Yeah, he did it with Rocky. Like A lot of people are doing it nowadays. Rambo, right? Expendables. You know, exactly. Free franchise. <laughs> Adrian, back on TV. <laughs> but yeah, pretty much it. Um, so the last question is, what inspired you to create a one-man show? And has this opened any doors for you? Mm. Um, I felt like I had to do it. Uh, so back during the pandemic, there were no auditions, nothing was filming. So uh, I was just in my room, it was a lockdown. And I was like, yo, but there's all these current events that's happening. A lot of things are going on, what's going on. I gotta say something. But I didn't want to just be that person that's a talking head that's like, and right now, here on the news, we have you know, two people that just got killed and you know, COVID-19 is running rapid. I didn't want to do that. I don't know why you did that accent. That's <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, that's a pretty good accent. Thank you, I tried. <laughs> um, I didn't want to do that. So what I did was that I created this show called The Blue Room because my, my bedroom is painted blue. <laughs> so, for that reason, it was called the Blue Room because it all took place in my bedroom. And I wanted to create three characters, each with their own unique perspectives on that given topic for that week. And I created like seven, eight episodes out of it. And part of that was talking about anti-Asian hate crimes.
But then I stopped it for a while, and it wasn't until 20, like last year, where um, I had an opportunity from the Asian American Arts Alliance. They're a great nonprofit. For anybody who's into the arts, definitely connect with them, Asian American Arts Alliance, because they give out $500 grants to local New York City residents who are artists. They always host town halls, A4. So I got connected with them, and then I, I, was, I received the $500 grant as one of the first recipients. And that was what helped me get my first Blue Room show in person. Because I wanted to get that in-person experience. Because we've been away from each other for so long. I knew I had to do a one-man show because I was seeing all these roles. And I'm like, I don't fit any of these people. I, when, I don't know why, but they look at me and they're like, he could be a very good stoic Asian man. <laughs> <laughs> if, I don't, if I don't smile, then yeah. It must have been the theatrical show. Right, right, I smile. <laughs> That's right, that look, you know. But I smile way too often, you know. So I, I wanted to create my own thing, and I was inspired actually by Jackie Chan because something that he said was that back then, when Bruce Lee just passed, everybody was trying to find the next <coughs> Bruce Lee. And Jackie Chan was like, you know, I can't do that because I gotta do something that nobody else could do. So I'm gonna do my own stunts. That's so crazy that nobody else could copy me. And I thought to myself, I was like, what's something that I can do that nobody else can do? So I'm like, all right, I'm going to write these characters. I'm going to play seven characters. Some of them will live on screen. Some of them will live on stage. I'm going to play the piano. All the music is original. I'm going to rap in Cantonese and in English. And I'm like, OK, this is something that I know I can do. And I know nobody's going to write that role for me or write those types of roles. And as you can see, all those characters in there are very distinct Asian characters. They're not what you typically would think of, right? We have an Asian frat bro. I never see Asian frat bros on like national television on any capacity. I don't normally see an Asian stoner kid, except for Harold and Kumar. That's the only one. So, so, and I've never seen an elderly Asian woman that doesn't have an accent, right? So I want to include all these different types of characters that I want to portray to show the wide variety and the diaspora of Asian Americans. So long story short, I had to do it. Yeah. Yes, and we're so glad you did. Oh, thank you. <laughs>
nah, I got schooled up there. You know, I learned so much about Asian American history, and I was like, wait, how come I'm only learning about this now? But I figured that like most people don't have the opportunity to just take an elective course in college for that. But I do feel that storytelling is a great vehicle to help share this with a wider audience. And I was like, you know what? In high school, I love doing theater. I love performing. I love singing. I love to make videos. Let's get back into that. And so I started getting back into that for that reason. It, that was the click. It was I had all that love in there, but it wasn't enough to just love. I need to get that kick in my butt to go, all right, this is what you're meant to do. And so now I'm here. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost ending. Anybody else having a, a question that um, can relate to some of the young folks here that are interested in acting? How many people are in the industry anyway? In the media industry, acting she industry, filmmaking like industry. Reluctantly, This is us for you. Uh, you've been in decades. Manifest, currently, Clem Chung, I mean, and Phil Lee, that funny, funny thing with Jennifer Lopez, with the, um, no, I can't say it on, I can't say it on. <laughs> <laughs> you had to say it, it was so funny. Uh, John Salinga, uh, a wonderful performer also. Uh, Our also three entertainers from Judo Club, uh, with Perry Young. So uh, we're so happy you're in the audience, and we bow to our professionals, for sure. And for you young kids here, we bow to you too. Because that with your ambition, with your drive, with your purpose, you can go out there and do the same thing. Change the narrative, right? Change that stereotype. That's what you can all do. And um, thank you so much. This has been a wonderful time. Rob Chen, you are so <laughs>